We're continuing our series when the enemy comes in. Today, God is a strong defense. When you're facing impossible situations, God is a strong defense. Yes, he is. When you are in times of peace, God is a strong defense. Right. He is known as Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who gives me victory. Hallelujah. In the book of Exodus chapter 17 and verse 15, Moses built an altar and called on the name of Jehovah Nisi. Yes. The CEV says, Moses built an altar and named it, the Lord gives me victory. Yes, hallelujah. That's a good thing when you're praying, the Lord gives me victory. Yes, right. Before the victory comes, I, I anoint my altar yes. and say, the Lord gives me victory. Hallelujah. The King, New King James says, the Lord is my banner. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one I like the most. I like all of them. Because I see a, a God who gives us victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses called on the name of the Lord. You know, this is very important. When you are in times of need, make an altar and call on the name of the Lord. How many of you have a place that you normally pray? If you don't, you need to make one so that you can go to God Go to your altar and call upon the name of the Lord. So Moses made his altar and he called it Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner or the Lord gives me victory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 from the Good News Translation. This is really a child's version of the New Testament. So it's very, more, it's more simple for every one of us. Might help me today. Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it so and so provide you with a way out. Hallelujah. Have you ever had a day when everything just seemed like it was coming against you? Have you ever had one of those days where, where no matter what you did, it seemed like the enemy conspired against you from every side? There are days like that. When, when everything that you face, it seems like it's in opposition to you. The enemy has come out against you. You need to know that God defends his people. Even when we do not see the way of escape, God is a very present help to help you in the times of trouble. I want to tell you that over and over today, and if I don't tell it enough times, you write it down. God is a present help, and he's there even when I don't see him. He will help me in my troubles. He will always come at the right time. You know, throughout the Old Testament, and I, I don't want you to get uh, fatigued in this series on when the enemy comes in, because I see this happening throughout the history with God's people. It doesn't just happen once in a while. God's people often faced times of difficulty. And when I observe God's people going through these things, God has always intervened. He's intervened in many different ways. And every time God intervenes in a different way, it helps every one of us. You know, God, God doesn't always come to your aid the way that he did the last time. You know, the last time was good, but your situations have changed, and, but God is the same. In the Old Testament, there were so many times that God came to the aid of his people. Sometimes, often, really, God's, the enemies of God's people were, were so ferocious. Uh, sometimes God's people lost heart. They even reached a point where they fainted inside with fear. 
They were anxious. They were disturbed. They were discouraged. You know, that helps me. You know why it helps me? Because sometimes I say to myself, you ought to be stronger. You shouldn't be discouraged when these things come. You should have faith because look what the Lord did for you the last time. Amen. But a lot of times when we're going through these things, we reach that moment that we say, I don't know if God is a present help today. I'm going through so much. Often their enemies came with such numbers that the people of God, the children of Israel, the people of Judah, reached this point that they said, we despair even of life. One of the illustrations of this is in the book of 2 Chronicles. We're going to use this as a text today. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. <clears throat> It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Stop a minute, look at that. People from several nations came against God's people. If I have the image right, because this is the way that I see it, they weren't just coming in one way. They were coming. It, it seems like the people of God are surrounded. The troubles are great. Verse 2. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon, Tamar, which is in Gideon. So they were down in, in a, uh, basically close to the, the swamps, the lowlands. They were, they were near the city. You now sometimes it seems like that. The enemy is so near us. The battles are so great, we don't see a way to run. You know, it's, it's easy when we see the enemy coming from afar and we have a moment that we can escape. We have a plan. But here it was that the enemy was so near that it seemed like all of a sudden there was no, no room to get out. Verse 3. <clears throat> and Jehoshaphat feared. There's a sermon. And Jehoshaphat feared. And he set himself to seek the Lord. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. <clears throat> and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. So Jehoshaphat became afraid. When he saw what was coming, when he saw the, the enemy and kept against him, he became afraid in his heart and he decided that he was going to seek the Lord. You know, that really is the first step. You have to start seeking God. Right. Whatever it is that's coming against you, start seeking the Lord. Yes, amen. Shortly after the disasters that happened at Ramoth Gilead, these three mighty armies attacked from across the Jordan River. Jehoshaphat heard about these great armies that were on the western shore of the Dead Sea, and he he was and that they were headed for Jerusalem, and he became afraid. Second Chronicles gives us an example of how God defends his people when it seems like we are against odds that are greater than we can handle. Right. Israel's enemies outnumbered them three to one. Have you ever been outnumbered? Your problems were greater than you were. I don't know the numbers of times. You know, and I, I believe that the reason that the Lord laid this series on my heart for you was that 
we are being attacked in so many ways. Our finances, the economy, the enemies, the health issues, family issues. Do I need to keep going? It seems like sometimes that they are all around us. So they were outnumbered three to one. Sometimes in our life, it seems that very same thing is going on. And it's not just physical things. Sometimes it really feels like the enemy of our soul is out to get us. Have you ever felt, do you feel even now, that you're under a spiritual attack? Even if you don't recognize it to be a spiritual thing, a lot of times the physical things that happen to us are indeed a spiritual attack. Do you remember when Job was attacked? What was it that caused all of Job's dilemma? Satan had gone to the throne of God and he said, you, you see Job down in there. He's one of your chosen ones. And, and God, it's, it's not fair you put this hedge around him. That's the only reason that Job is serving you. And God said, okay, Satan, you can, you can go and test him, but you can't have his life. You remember and, and Job, Job held on to his faith through it all. It, it appeared sometimes just on the surface that it was, it was just sickness and bad things happened to his family, but there was a whole lot more to that going on. It was the enemy who was coming against him. When it seems like everything is against you and you're outnumbered by your enemies, you need to get this in your heart. The enemy of your soul is coming to, to kill, steal, and destroy, but God is on your side. And because of the Lord, you're going to have victory. Oh, yes. In this story, in Chronicles chapter 20, it gives us some help when we are facing overwhelming odds. First, when more is against you, or it appears that more is against you than is for you, turn to God first. This is so important. Amen. I don't know the numbers of times fretting and worrying and fear grabs a hold of you. And it seems like sometimes turning to God is a second thought. Well, we better turn to God now. No, the first thing you need to do when you hear of the enemy coming, when the first signs that he is showing up, you need to turn to God. I, I know a lot of people go to their parents or they go to their friends or they go to some spiritual leaders. You, you, you need to go to God. One thing that I want to encourage every one of you, I try to do this all of the time. Please, please, please hear me. You need to develop a relationship with God so that every time at the onset of trouble, you immediately say, God, help me. I'm turning to the Lord who is my defense. I'm turning to the Lord. All of these other opinions may be good and you may need some counsel from somebody else, but really and truly, you need the Lord. Yeah. 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 1 when the Moabites, Ammonites Meunites declared war on Je Jehoshaphat he was afraid so he decided to ask the Lord what to do I think sometimes we need to do that same thing in our life you need to stop seeking all of the other counsel and you need to turn to God God what should I do What's the steps that I need to take? God, I need direction. I'm, I'm plunged into this difficult circumstance. I don't have the answers. God, you are the God of all answers, and I'm turning to you. You see, the, this is very important, that you realize that God is a present help in your times of trouble. 
I know what happens to a lot of people. As soon as the next cloud of, of trouble arises, the fear overwhelms them and they seek a place to run. Yes. I want to tell you run, but run to God. Amen. That's right. God will help you. Yes, he God will. will be your defense. Yes, he will. When Jehoshaphat started praying, he asked God three questions. Look at these. In verse 6, he said, Are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Are you not? Are you not God? You need to know this in your own heart. God, are you really God? I, I need to know who is the Lord your God. In my dilemmas, I need to know, is my God able? Is my God greater than? Is my God a defense? Is my God a rock? Is my God strong? Is my God a healer? Is my God a deliverer? Is my God a strong defense against the enemy? In everything I can say, yes, Lord, look what you are. My God is a great God. You need to remind yourself of that. After Jehoshaphat asked, are you not? He said, did you not? Verse 7. He said, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people arrived? I think that it's important, first of all, we need to determine that God is God, and then we need to go back and look in our lives and see what it is the Lord has done in our history. Right. It's very important, it's imperative that every one of us set down. I've encouraged you to do this many times. You need to sit down sometimes and just review what it is the Lord has done for you. It, it's, it's important to look back and see. He saved me. He kept me. He healed me. He provided for my need. He fought for me. When I didn't even know which way to turn, the Lord said, this is the way. God is a God who knows what to do in your life when you don't know what to do. Then he asked the third question. Will you not? Verse 12. Oh, our God, will you not stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. There, there it is, really. Lord, we don't know what to do, but God, will you not intervene in this time? You know, I, I, I thank God for last time, but this time is just as important in my life. Lord, will you not help me? Will you not be my defense? Will you not be my healer this time? Lord, I need you today. I thank you for yesterday. I remember all that you did, and I give you praise for every bit of it, Lord. But today, Lord, I need help from heaven. I need deliverance. I need you, God, in my life today. One more time. One more time in my life. Lord, one more time, heal my body. One more time, give me strength. One more time, Lord, give me the encouragement. When you are facing overwhelming odds, turn to God first. Talk to God about your situation. And then tell God exactly how you feel. I think it's very important for you to know that God is able to handle your negativity. Yes, he is. You can go to God and tell him everything that's going on. God, I'm just totally discouraged. I'm totally disappointed. I just am frustrated. I don't have answers. My heart is broken. I'm, I'm needing help. I can't find any help. God, will you be there? You know, sometimes when you start articulating it, it makes you feel almost foolish. Look what the Lord has done for you. And if you really recognize who he is and what he has done, you can, you can tell God what's going on, but it, it really helps you to, to see my God is bigger than this. Yes, amen. My God can help me through this. You know, sometimes when I'm going through these things, what I see as an 
answer is not what God has in mind. Have any of you ever laid out your plans for what God's going to do? You know, he's going to do this and then he's going to do this. He, he always surprised me. God comes to my aid in ways that I never thought. He sends groceries to your doorstep. He sends money in the mail. Yes, he does. He, he, he gives an answer that you were not expecting from an unexpected source. Right. You, you may have tried all of those other things, but really the answer is not in all of those other things. The answer is in God. Yes. When you're facing overwhelming situations, turn to God first. Talk to God about your situation. Tell God exactly how you feel and then trust God to help you. This is, I think, very critical. Jehoshaphat said, we are powerless. We do not know what to do, but God, our eyes are upon you. We need to change our focus from all of these things to, sit, to seeing and say, God, we're, we're stopping. We're going to stop looking at these things and we're going to start and keep looking at the Lord our God. It's very critical for your future to keep your eyes focused on the Lord. God knows the way through the wilderness. He knows how to help his people. He knows the way across the Red Sea. My God is a God that is able to help you. You can trust him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So where have you put your eyes right now? Are you looking at your problems? Well, it's easy to do that. I wake up with my problems every morning. And I'm not talking about my wife. <laughs> I wanted to clarify that real quickly. <laughs> And, you know, it's so easy, is it not, when you're hurting in your body, when your stomach will not process food, when your heart is broken, when your future seems uncertain, when things are not clear, it's so easy to focus on those things. Do I have a witness? Yes. And so we, we need to say, God, I'm going to start today focusing on you. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 15, it says, Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the battle is not yours, but God's. I know some people will read that and they say, Well, that's just for them then, and it has nothing to do with me now. I want to tell you that the battle is not yours, it is God's. God has always been the one who has come through. This is a problem that every one of us have. Sometimes we think, look how strong I was. Boy, did I ever cause the victory to come. No, you didn't. It was because God was on your side. God was fighting for you. It was God who caused you to triumph. It was God who caused you to overcome. God is on your side. You need to turn your attention to the God who cannot fail. Stop thinking that it's just because you used your willpower. I want to tell you on my own part, I, I am a pretty strong-willed person. And I can press through a lot of things that, you know, it's determination. I've learned in life that I have to just press or it doesn't get done. A lot of times when I don't feel like it, I'll go ahead and do it. It's just this determination in me. I'm not going to sit down and quit. Right. But I realize in my own life, and I'm a strong-willed person, that it's not just me that gets, gets it done. It's because God is on my side. I can point to so many times that I, I have exhausted my wisdom and exhausted my strength, but the Lord showed up, and the Lord gave the victory, and the Lord uh, defeated the enemy. God is a God of, of, of infinite resources, and he is able to help you. 
Amen. This verse came to my mind. You are a God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. He's not talking about your strong will. He's talking about God being in you, there to help you. The Spirit of the Lord is there. God is telling you, I have invested everything that is needed in my family, and you're part of my family. You are a child of God. You are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. God has put his name upon you, and he says, you are mine. He says, I will supply all your need according to my riches and glory. He says, I've given my spirit. I've given my wisdom. I'm working in your behalf. I need to hear this from God. God saying, I'm going to work this out. The battle is not yours. Verse number 17 says, you will not even need to fight. Take your position, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord is with you. I'm going to tell you over and over this morning. Sometimes all you have to do is take a stand. Yes, amen. I'm trusting God. I'm going forward with God's strength. God is going to help me. And when you do, you start seeing that it's the Lord that works it out. Really, this is a challenge to our faith to put your faith in God. Put your trust in God. Start relying on the Lord. It's a sign of confidence when you say, when you say I'm going to take a stand with the Lord God Almighty and I believe God will help me. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. I want to tell you, God has made a lot of promises. There are 7,000 plus promises in the word of God and you can stand on the promises of God. God is a faithful God. What he has said, he will also do. He promises this over and over. I will keep my word. God is not a man that he should lie. He will always fulfill his promises to his people. Now one thing that happened here, and really this is part of this step of faith, is before anything happened, Jehoshaphat said, let's call some singers and let's start praising God. And so they, they, the enemy's still there. There is no victory apparent. But they said, we're going to praise God for the victory. We believe God is going to give us the answers. So they began to thank God in advance. He told everyone, give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love endures forever. I want to tell you, you need to do this. You need to start praising God. I have seen this many times. There is power in praising God. I don't know the numbers of times. Especially when I don't feel it. It's good, it's good sometimes to walk around the walls of Jericho. Say, we don't see anything happening. The enemy's still strong, but God, we're trusting you. So they started going around, out to the battle. I see, I, in my mind, their, their hands are raised up. They're praising God. There's people with timbrels and they're dancing and tambourines and yes. maracas or whatever. <laughs> Banjos and guitars and saxophones and trumpets. And they would carry a piano if they could. <laughs> they're worshiping the Lord. They're lifting up their voice in praise to God. And they're saying, our God is good. Our God is a merciful God. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the things that when I look at this text, I, I encourage you read all of chapter 20. You're going to see this is what happened. That as they started doing this, as they started praising the Lord, even though they didn't see anything, even though the enemy was still there, God defeated the enemy. Amen. 
And it was just like the prophet said, you're not going to have to do anything. Well, they praised the Lord. You know, I, I really think what some of us have in our mind, this is what I've got to do to work this out. I remember when I was real young in pastoring, in the ministry, someone told me, and I listened to them, that if you want answers from God, you've got to pray and wear yourself out in prayer, and that you're the one that's going to bring the answer down. And I believed them. And I thought, man, I've got, I've got to, I've got to go to heaven and bring God down. Didn't work. I have to realize in my life, he is Jehovah Nisi. He is the God who is a strong defense. He is the one who is there. I believe you should pray. Don't get me wrong at all. I believe you should go to God. I believe you need to worship the Lord, but the victory is the Lord's. If it, if it could be accomplished by your wisdom and by your power and your spirituality, then God really isn't necessary. God really wants you to understand the victory comes because God is God. The victory comes because God is powerful. The answers come, and, and it's amazing to me, when it seems like it's impossible to happen, God comes through. When it seems like the defeat is on the doorstep, God comes through. When it seems like the enemy has the upper hand, God comes through. That's the kind of God that you're serving this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I think you need to learn how to praise God in faith. Yeah. Every once in a while in my prayer, I just fall under conviction about asking God for anything more, and I want to just praise him. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I thank you. Yeah. First of all, Lord, I thank you for the victory we had. Yes, amen. What you did last week, I thank you. Yes, amen. I thank you, God, that we were saved and we were healed and we were delivered. Thank you, God, that the, the enemy that came so strong against us the last time, he did not get the upper hand. Yes, hallelujah. When we went through the fire, we were not burned up. Right. And when we went through the flood, we were not overwhelmed. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God that I serve. Lord, I thank you for yesterday. I even thank you, God, for what you're doing today. I need to praise him. Right, right. I want to get back to the walls of Jericho. I need 30 more minutes this morning. I'm not going to take them, but I need them. You know, when, when the children of Israel were going around the walls of Jericho, it must have looked like a daunting, impossible task. Do you realize nothing they did caused the walls to fall. Right. It was God. I wish your problems were visible so that you could point at it and define it and say that's exactly it. I'm through with that. Doesn't work that way, does it? So I praise the Lord. I, I, I want you, if you have it in you, to lift up a praise to the Lord this morning and just begin worshiping him. Thank him for his holiness. Thank him for his power. Thank him for his victory. Thank him that he never fails. Thank him for the times he has healed you. Thank him for what he's going to do. Even if you don't see how it can be done, go ahead and praise the Lord. Thank you for his mercy that endures forever. Keep on praising the Lord. Exalt him. Lift him up. Thank him and praise him. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Lord, I know you are going to do it. I know you're going to make a way. 
I know the answers are coming. I know the strength is coming. I know the healing is coming. I know the supply is coming. I know the victory is mine. I know it, Almighty God. I can trust you, Lord. Lord, I rely upon your word. I rely upon your faithfulness. Oh, God, you are the mighty God, the powerful God, the victorious God. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. Oh, God, I praise you for the victory that I know is coming right now, for the answers that are coming right now, for the healing that is coming right now, for the salvation and the grace that is coming. Lord, even in impossible situations, we trust you and we rely upon you, Almighty God. Lord, I'm expecting, I'm praising you with expectation that the victory is mine in the name of Jesus. some impossible impossible situations you don't know where the strength is coming from where I mean you're looking at yourself and you don't know God turn to God Amen. I just really feel it's a deep stir here that God is speaking to your heart. Don't, don't lose heart in the midst of what you're seeing. God is on the throne. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I want to pray for you. Lord, our eyes are upon you. We don't have answers, Almighty God. In fact, God, with our natural eyes, we cannot see a way. But our eyes are upon you. Oh God, we know that you are Jehovah Nisi. You are a strong defense. You are a banner for us. You are lifted up and exalted and we know almighty God that you are able so today Lord we call upon you Lord for my brother and sister that are facing insurmountable odds against them sickness disease finances 
obstacles, the adversary, troubles in their families, troubles in their lives. Almighty God, I know that there, there are things that rise up in our lives that we do not have answers, answers for, but our eyes are upon you. And Lord, I keep hearing this message today that the battle is not yours, but it is God's. Trust in the Lord and you will see the victory. Lord, I believe that today and we receive answers from you, Almighty God. Even now, while we do not see them, we give you praise that the answer is coming. Victory is ours in Jesus Christ. I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name.